Welcome back to the channel, guys. Now, we've been waiting on this video for a minute, and finally, it's here. So we got everything we need to get Scoots to the track, hopefully. Let's take a look, and uh, you know, there's still one more big thing we gotta do. We gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of work ahead of us, but let's take a look at some of the things we got. So the big deal is we got our torque converter back from FTI. So let's go ahead and take a look on the goods inside. All right, cool. So we got our extension that goes on the back side of the torque converter into the crank. And hell yeah, brother, we got our torque converter. And this thing looks awesome. So they cut this bad unit open. This is a billet part down here that's welded on. They fixed everything they, need, they needed to fix. They restalled it and it should roughly raise the flash or the effective stall by about 800 RPM, which is a lot because it was a 3600 stall. So now it's like a 42, 43. I don't know. I don't do math, but this unit's brand new. It's got a brand new hub on it. Everything is looking great. Look at that. We put a new deck now on there for me. This is looking great. Put that unit on there. And that's our torque converter. So can't wait to test that out on the trans brake, see what we can get the engine to flash to. Next, cause we kind of did a little bit of damage to our input shaft. While we were there, we picked up 300M input shaft from FTI. She's a beaut. All right, so we had to get some new Teflon seals for our input shaft and I got some spares just in case. Cause uh, these Teflon seals can be a pain in the butt sometimes to install. Got all new, Four corner high energy frictions. That's what I've always used. They just work great. There's some heart numbers for you if you're curious. And then I just got my various transmission parts in this box. Spares, you know, a bunch of stuff. So that's the goal. We're gonna get this tranny built, hopefully get it in and do some things. And lastly, we got this $18 Chinesium temperature gauge. It's called a water temperature gauge, but it goes up to 300 Fahrenheit. And that's all we need to monitor our transmission a wiring diagram there man i can't count now i can't open a box and i got this uh this bung separate this is gonna go into the oil pan this is the sensor that'll go into the bung and then this is the actual gauge itself $18 piece of Chinesium. It says oil temp. It's going to be trans temp. We're going to have to install that. And the way you test if these are accurate are if it's 86 degrees outside and you fire this on and it shows 86 degrees. Now you know it's accurate or accurate enough, I should say. So we'll have to install this bung into the oil pan. And basically how it works is It's a bulkhead fitting. So this will thread in and on. I might shave it down, it's pretty long. That'll be on the outside of the oil pan. You got your nut for the inside. You got two rubber grommets to help seal. And then you have the washer that'll help dig in and help seal that nut so it keeps it from moving. And you got your uh, grommets to seal everything. It's eighth inch NPT on the inside, which this sensor just so happens to be. But I want that probe to stick out past. So I'm probably gonna hack this, probably gonna hack this down, you know, to about there somewhere. So that probe when it's installed in this is actually sticking out in the fluid. The fluid will be able to get into there without a doubt, but we wanna just make sure that it's getting the best results. On top of that, the last thing we're gonna do is take our oil dipstick for our tranny, stick it into the tranny, and you, with a Dremel or something, cut a line where the oil level should be. So we know that when we're checking our transmission fluid, it's 100% accurate and we ain't got nothing to worry about. All right, let's start doing stuff.
All right, so this is the whole bottom stack and it's ready to drop into the trans. Just gotta flush it out with the clean again. And I noticed some. That seal right there, it's your center sort. That's your lube circuit. That's where the return from the transmission cooler. So your pump pumps it out of the transmission and it comes out this hole right here and goes to a tranny cooler. And then it comes back after being cooled off and goes in that hole right there, which lines up with this hole right here and lubes everything. Now being that that seal is damaged, that's no good. That's really bad actually. That's how you can fry a tranny real quick. Cause the whole bottom half, this is a serious lube circuit here, is not getting lubricated properly. So it's almost kind of a blessing that I found this cause this would have really burned some stuff up. Uh, nothing was burned up thankfully. We didn't really have enough time to do that or enough action on it. So this seal right here, I'm pretty sure Sure, I had a leftover one from when I did Riley's tranny build. We're gonna head on over to Mr. Corey P. Shop, maybe get a little progress update. I've seen some things in photos, and uh, you know, there might be twin spoolie boys all welded in and V banded on, so we might get to, you know, take a look at that and pick up that seal we need because I'm pretty sure I had a leftover one that I left there in the kit. So let's go on and do that. Now, this thing's starting to look sick. All right, and just like that, she's replaced. We're almost done here. Just gotta put the overdrive planted in and the pump in. And I'm at the point where I need to put the Teflon seals into the new 300M shaft. I figured y'all wanna watch that instead of a time lapse. Here it goes and nothing. Got a spare set just in case. So first thing we're gonna do is Stretch them out. Some people heat them up. I feel like there really isn't a point. Cut. So it's stretched out on there. Make sure y'all can see this. Stretched out on the big end. And it'll start shrinking immediately. It won't go back to size quite yet, but um, what we're gonna do is pop it off, get it on there, get it going. Might need to come behind it with something. Nope, ain't wanting to work with us. That's why these are a pain in the ass. Might just have to stretch them both out and let them sit for like 10 minutes so they keep form better. What I was doing there is just kind of straightening them out so they're flush all the way around. Guess while we're waiting on them, we can go ahead and stretch out the little guys so that they're stretched and ready to go when we get back to them. All right, let's give that a shot again on one of the bigger guys. Okay, so you see how big it is on there? Massive, right? Let's see if we can get this one to easily go down to the next layer since it's already so much bigger. Now you could force it in there, but I'm trying to work it. I'm trying to be nice to it. If you carefully work your way around it with a flathead, pushing it in while pulling up on it, it'll eventually get to this point. And then you just kind of twirl it around a few times. Let it sit for a minute so it can Memorize the shape, go back to this one and re-stretch it back out.
dirty, but good. That's two. There you have it. All right, I'm gonna knock this thing out now. All right, so I was getting everything where it's gonna be. I got that thing holding the bottom Teflon seals tight. I'm gonna leave it like that overnight so they set up good. Everything's in. I'm just gonna put the pump in, knocked out the pump bushing to replace it because it looked pretty damn rough. And uh, didn't have one to put back in. So yeah, that's arriving tomorrow. Then I'll put a new pump seal in. And uh, I switched up gears. Now I'm about to do my, that's where my old sensor was. But my old sensor What did I do? I just had it. Okay, well anyways, my old sensor had two wires and it went to a special kind of gauge. This is a different type of sensor. So it's a cheaper sensor, that guy right there. So it goes in through this doodad. So I'm just gonna open up that hole, put this in there, probably shave it down, cut it off so that, that probe's sticking out. And uh, that'll probably be it for tonight. <laughs> She is. And I made up a little wire for it because that thing is not long enough. So I wanted to put that in the car. Put that in the car tomorrow. Um, finish up stuff on the trans here. I could have put the valve body on and whatnot. I put my my balls up where they go but yeah didn't get to that yet pump bushing pump seal get all that tomorrow finish it up get it in the car hopefully new torque converter go out in the street out there and pin her son see what she flashes to <laughs> <laughs>